Welcome to the Chainsaw Porting Class Series. Uh, if this is your first video, go on down to the description. There will be a playlist. You can watch the whole series from start to finish. Uh, we are learning how to port a chainsaw, and we're going to be specific. We're going to port our old Home Light Super XL Auto Chainsaw. Uh, just going to, you know, make a good firewood saw a little better. Uh, it's, a, it's a cheap saw that anybody can get. And it's a good good one to do your first grinding on, if you know what I mean. Now today, I got a, my cylinder off, and it's got some uglies in there, and we're gonna see if we can clean them up. Uh, let me show you. So, as you can see there, there's some uglies. Uh, the other side ain't so bad. But we're gonna see if we can clean this up a bit. Alrighty? All right, so during my cleaning process, I discovered that that cylinder is not good. Uh, the plating peeled right off. So I'm starting over with another cylinder. All righty. Look up top there. So you can see where the plating is coming off. So it changes color and so forth, turns kind of silver. That's the aluminum beneath the plating. So you gotta be careful with that. If the plating comes off, then you, you gotta replace the cylinder. So typically I try to clean up the cylinders before replacing them. Uh, sometimes you don't need to. Sometimes they clean up, but sometimes they don't. Um, I just, I try all of them and you know, why waste the money if I don't need to? But for you, I was trying to think of a way for the homeowner to do this. And I think the best method is to do it by hand. Um, many might, some might just disagree with this, uh, but I'd rather you do it by hand than going out, spending a bunch of money if this is your first time. Uh, some of you might already have the tools at hand to do this, but we're gonna do, we're going to work on it by hand today. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I got a little square of Scotch-Brite. I'm just gonna stick it up in there, work it by my th with my thumb. Now all of my uh, work is gonna be side to side. I don't want to go anything up and down. Everything's going to be side to side. So I'm just going to start with scotch Bright, just to see how it turns out. I'm going to work around. Just keep on going the whole way around. All right, so now I have this, it's rubber backed sandpaper. And I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to work it by hand. Now, don't be afraid. Uh, remember, you're just you're just trying to save your cylinder from having to be replaced. So don't be afraid to go in there. Um, this takes a bit of time. It does. Don't expect to be done in five minutes. It's going to take a little while. But make sure you get all of it. Around the, the exhaust port area is probably going to be your worst. You're not really removing material, you're cleaning it mostly, is what you're doing. This is this is all I do. Um, now I'll bring you back here as I'm finishing up. All right, so I'll bring you in and I'll show you what my cylinder looks like right now. Uh, I could go further, but I'm happy with where it is. I don't think I'm going to. It will run just fine the way I have it. Uh, it doesn't need to be 100% perfect, if you know what I mean. So let me show you. And this is mine done. So this is the way I'm going to run it. You can see it's all done by hand. Uh, I'm not worried about that little bit at the top. But this is how I'm going to run this one. Now, <clears throat> some might want to uh, hone. You know, a lot of people will talk about honing their cylinders. Uh, these old home light cylinders, I don't suggest it. Uh, the plating is a little thinner and you can end up causing damage. I'd rather you go without any honing whatsoever. Not, like literally just doing what I just showed you and that's it. 
I'd rather you go at that level. Uh, it will take longer for rings to seat. It will. But I'd rather you run this. Run it like this than trying to, to hone it and ruin it or whatever. That's how I've done the last, I don't know, 15 or 20 home lights that I've done. Uh, that's how I've done them all. And so far, I'm satisfied with the results. Uh, so if, if you want to explore honing, I'd try to save that for something with a little bit more uh, coating in the cylinder than these old home lights. Alrighty. So right now I'm in the process. I need to put a new piston on. So I'm in the process of doing that. Now I actually have two choices. This is where the secrets come in. Uh, this is an aftermarket replacement piston for Home Light Super XL Auto. Okay. This is replacement piston not for a home light. This is for a Pioneer 1200A. They are identical. Diameter is the same. They're the same there. The difference is the 1200A, the top of the piston is just a tad higher. Uh, let me see if I can show you here. I'm going to stick the pin in one, stick the pin in the other probably can't see it this is the piston for the 1200a this is the aftermarket piston for the home light you probably hard to tell but you see how the dome on the 1200a is just a little bit bigger than the super xl that should increase compression it's kind of like a pop-up piston I got the pin ran through both both pistons. And another thing, the Super XL, where your rings line up, you got these little pins that put your, your groove on your rings in a straight line. On the 1200A, they are offset a little bit. So hopefully that helps with compression as well. I'm going to have to put this piston on and go through my numbers again just to make sure. Alrighty, that's what I'm doing right now. Pretty simple to install. So I was trying to get a shot of changing the piston, but the, it's just too tight. I had to pull it away, pull the camera away. But it's not hard. If you end up looking inside one side is going to have just like a little ring and the other side is going to have like a clip. Pull the clip out and then just push the pin across. It's as simple as that. Reverse the order to put it back together. Um, the pin just, you know, it just slides right in and there's a clip on either side to hold it. Okay, so it's as simple as that. I just I couldn't work with the camera between me and what I was doing but now we're gonna go with some new numbers let me slide this on all right so now I got to start with finding top dead center again Just gonna use an ink pen like I did before. Try to get you a good view of this. So there it's at 62. There it's at 50, 47, 40, 40, 47. So I need to come this way. We'll set it at 55. Ooh, that was close, 54. So that's about 54 and a half. And that's at 54 and a half. So there we go. Top dead center. There we go. Let's start over. 
from scratch with our numbers, new cylinder, different piston, or it's a different piston and cylinder. So everything's going to be different. Got that first ray of light. You see it coming up? And there it is. See it? Let's see where we're at. We're at 95, 100, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 105 degrees on the exhaust. Yep, 105 degrees on the exhaust. Now, I want to find my blowdown. The first moment the transfer is open. All right, so let's see where that transfer is opening at. 90, 100, 10, 20, 1. 90, 110, and 21. We're at 121 on that. So if you take 121, subtract 105, and we are at 16 degrees of blowdown. Now, we also want to look at the duration, exhaust duration. It's pretty simple to figure out. So we got 105 degrees here that it's closed on the way down from top dead center. We got 105 degrees over here that it's closed on the way up to top dead center. And the, the space below here is everywhere that the exhaust is open. So if this was at 105 degrees this way, okay, so right there would be 105 degrees before top dead center. The exhaust is open all of this distance. Okay. That's the amount of time we have during the rotation to expel all our gases. Now the easy way to figure that out for the duration is do 105 plus 105 be 210. Subtract 210 from 360 gives you a duration of 150 degrees. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's where we're at. Now, come back next week and we'll go over some decision making and it might take a couple of videos of the decision making, but at least now we know what numbers we're starting with and we'll be able to move on from there. Alrighty, thanks. See you next week.